Welcome back, everyone. In this lesson, we are going to turn that logical solution we came up with into a code solution. Now, I've also included the final code in a REPL in your resource folder already. The reason we did this is because from this point forward, some of these questions are going to be much more extensively written than what we're used to. And there's going to be more variables that we have to keep track of. So it might be better if you have access to the final code and it's easier for you to follow along. Now, I'm still going to be writing it all here for you just so that you know what the process is going to be like in the actual interview and what your thought process should be when you talk it out and come up with it. But the most important thing is that you're able to follow along with everything we're doing. And it might be better if you have a reference to the final code to see what it is that we're actually doing. So let's actually just jump right into it. You'll see here that I have not only our function that lets us calculate the water at a current point, but also I've initialized the function. So here heights is going to be the array that we pass into this function. So what we want to do is we want to initialize a total water that we're going to want to return. So this is just some value that's going to initialize at zero, and it's going to allow us to keep track of how much water we found so far. Now, what we also need is we need to initialize that pointer that goes across the array and calculates using this function, the actual water amount. So what I'm going to say, though, is that let's say we get into this P here. What we'll need to also remember to do once we have that value is we need to figure out how we're going to scan left and how we're going to scan right. So let's actually just do the first P first, which we're going to do with a for loop because we need to iterate through every element. So here I'm going to say let p equals zero, p less than height dot length, and then p plus plus. So nothing here has changed. Now for the part where we scan all the way to the left and to the right, we're going to need two pointers, and each pointer is going to start at the current value of p. So let's say we've scanned all the way here to one. Well, the p on the left and the P on the right are both going to start at this value and then go left and right respectively. And we also need some other variable that's going to keep track of the max value that we've seen so far. So it's going to go right, for example, and say is zero greater than the current value, which we're going to initialize also at zero. No, zero is not greater than zero. Is three greater than zero? Yes. So we keep track of three. Is one greater than three? No. Is zero greater than three? No. Is one greater than three? No. Is two greater than three? No. Three is our final max. So here we need four things then. We need that let left p, which is going to be equal to p. We need that right p, which is also going to be equal to p. And we need a max left, which is going to be equal to zero, and a max right, which is also going to be equal to zero. Now what we're going to do in order to actually iterate left and iterate right is use while loops. So here I'm just going to separate them into two different while loops because the logic is going to be a little different. Now here I'm going to say as long as left p is greater than or equal to zero, then I want to run this code block. And here inside I'm going to say that the max left using the current value at left p is going to get calculated. So it's going to be equal to math.max, which we remember is a math function that comes with JavaScript by default that lets us select the maximum value between what we pass to it. And I'm going to pass in what we currently have stored as max left, and then our current value at left p. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to decrement left p. So this is going to move left p one value to the left. And then as long as left p now is greater than zero, it's going to run this code inside of our while loop again. And that's all there is to it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to rewrite this, but for our right side. And here we're going to say while our right p is less than heights.length. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say max right is equal to math.max. 
of max right and then our heights at right p and right is now going to increment instead of decrement so it's important to remember that because it's easy to just be copying your code over word for word and you'll notice that you'll get an error so just remember left p decrements because it's going to the left right p increments because it's going to the right so now that we have our max left and max right we need to calculate and store the current water that we have so far i'm going to say const current water is equal to our calculation. So we need the minimum value between the two maxes that we have. So let's say we need the max left and the max right. And then we're going to subtract our current heights at our current p value. So here what we're doing is we are just subtracting it from where this p currently is. And what we're also doing is we're now just using this function. That's all that code is doing. That's the current water calculation that we have right here. Now what we're going to do is we need to now see and figure out whether or not we want to add it to our total water. So here we can just use an if statement. We can say that if our current water is greater than or equal to zero, then I want to add that value to total water. So I'll say total water plus equals current water. And then with that, we just now need to close our code because we've done everything. We've gotten the current water. We've decided whether or not to add its total water. There's nothing else we need to do with our current p value. So then we close off our for loop right here. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to return total water. Close off our function, and that's it. This is the code. So there's a bit more logic that we had to consider because of our left moving p and our right moving p and then the final calculation. But it's actually quite simple once you look at it step by step. So what I want you to do is take this code, whether it's in the REPL I gave you or the one that we just wrote, and I want you to walk through using this original array to figure out if we actually end with our final answer, which is eight. So make sure that the code that we've just written works and you understand every step that's happening. Then this will take us to our next step, which is an exercise for you to test our code with our test cases. So we didn't come up with too many test cases and most of them are those zero test cases. So you'll run through the logic really quickly, but it's still a good exercise to know and understand every bit of the code that we've written and the logic of where everything flows. So do that and then in the next video, we are going to tackle space and time complexity. So I'll see you in the next video.